and welcome, and welcome to the creepy. I don't know. That's, that's all that's going on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll put those away now. Hello. Well, that was fun. So, I just wanted to make a video specifically for anyone that is um, looking to do a little bit more, experiment more, play with things, um, if the donut tutorial or whatever course um, is just not enough right now and you don't want to get too far ahead or whatever. This is some good stuff you can do to play around with. So... This is what we'll begin with, and this will be a pretty pretty short and simple video, mostly aimed at um, pure 3D beginners who haven't done a lot of 3D modeling before, um, and I guess anyone else that is getting used to Blender, but any like Blender users that already model stuff aren't going to really benefit from this. So... You should be somewhat comfortable with a lot of these hotkeys, but I'll say them as we go along. So, first thing is, I think it's really fun and helpful to get used to extruding things. And if you don't know what extruding is yet, or you've heard it, then this is perfect. So, I'm just going to press Shift A, and I'm going to bring in uh, a circle. Why not? Oh, look, and I have... Uh, Steam open. Goodbye. <laughs> so here's my circle. Now, if I go into edit mode, I press tab. Um, and I can make stuff from this pretty easily if I just select everything with A and hit E. And I can pull things up, move it down. Um, you kind of see that it's going inside out there. We can fix that later. But if you press, after pressing E, you can either right click and then press G and Z to move it up and down or whatever. Or after you just pressed E on it. So now I only have those. If I press E, I can just press Z straight away. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, then when I have it where I want it, I just click and this is half of what I'm going to show you in just this little bit. Um, so just with extruding, we can make a lot of uh, cool things. And it's this is really fun. I, rem I, I remember when I was first starting to learn 3D modeling, this was like a, you know, blew my mind, like how easy it was to just make things um, just doing it in this way. So uh, to get rid of this inside outness, we can just select everything, press A again, and then if you press Shift N, N for Niagara Falls, it will recalculate what side they should be facing. So now they're all facing outward, so that's what we want. So now um, I can select these vertices or edges. You can be an edge or ver a vertex mode. Um, but if I just Alt click, any of those, I'll alt click the top line. It's going to go all the way around the direction of the edge that I'm clicking. If I alt click that, then it's going to select the whole loop that um, is in the same direction as this edge that I'm clicking. So I want to select that and just press E and then S for scaling. So E and S and then click when I'm done. And then E and Z and E and S. E and Z, E and S, I'll go the other way right now, E and Z, E and S, and you can actually get some, you know, you can get like a lightsaber or something by just doing this, E, Z, E, S, E for extrude, Z, to move it up and click, so already you can see like we're getting some pretty cool shapes and it's actually really easy to get this e s and then easy easy <laughs> um anyway uh so it's it's all shaded um 
hard or flat, flat shading. Uh, we want it to be nice and smooth. So we can just press shade smooth here and then it'll be nice and smooth, except it doesn't look right. Like this shouldn't look, I don't know. It looks kind of weird and mushy and we can change that easily. Um, we can have Blender automatically, like what it's doing is it's like shading as if this is all the way around, but we want it to say like, oh, this is a flat edge, so we don't want it to continue. Basically, like, I'll show you with the options. So if you come down here to the properties tab, the little green triangle, it's the, I guess, data properties tab. Go down to normals here and then click auto smooth. And then that will fix up that and make it look a lot better so anyway yeah this is pretty simple stuff to do um okay like a lampshade or something so i'll delete that i just i press tab to go back into ob object mode and i press x and just hit delete x brings up a delete menu there's lots of different things you can delete um i won't get into all those right now but anyway, let's like make a lamp stand or something. So if we just go back and grab a circle, shift A, mesh circle, go back into edit mode. And I'm just going to hit E, Z again. It's inside out. So we'll press A and then shift N to recalculate the direction. Now we can like, let's see, E, S. Easy. So make making some kind of like lamp stand or something. You know, we could like uh, instead of just doing it ninety degree angles, we could bring it up a little bit like this. All I'm doing is pressing S to scale out, and then Z up and down like that. So we do it again. Let's bring it out like that. Scale it in a bit. And then E and S again, pull it up a little bit, G and Z, S. So you can get some cool shapes with this. Um, let's say that you've already made this shape and you want more lines so that you could curve this. Now all you'd have to do for that is hit Control R. This adds an edge loop or you can click this loop cut tool and then after you click that it's gonna you know just put it where you want it after you click oh you can just keep stamping them with that I don't use um, typically with blender you want to be using hotkeys locks it really speeds things up but uh, control R and then you can scroll up down to you know decide how many cuts you want I'm just going to do one right now. Now let's see two and click that. And then it's going to drag that out. If you don't, if you don't want that to move, like if you were fine before it started moving, just right click and then it'll stay there. So now I have these to work with and I can just like, um, alt click this edge and GZ to move it down and alt click this and GZ move it down. And now I've, you know, got some definition. Maybe I don't like this here, so I'll just all click that and S. I'll click that and S. Really just simple, simple stuff. So anyway, and then we'd have to fix this again. So right click on it and shade smooth. And then you want to come down here to data properties, normals, click auto smooth. And then we can change this angle too of where it cuts it off. It's got a limit of 30 degrees. So we can actually increase that until we get a nice round edge right here. So, okay, there we go. Yeah, so you could also select faces. So go into face select mode and then click on, alt click this edge here and it'll go this direction. And then we can just scale this in. So S, if we do that though, notice how like, how tall this is and as we scale it in it gets smaller and smaller until it's like at zero so we're losing the height so when you press like s 
and Z to like scale it in just like the Z axis. You can press S shift Z and it'll scale it in everything but the Z axis. So it won't it won't squish as you scale it. So you can look at it here, S shift Z. Now it's scaling in everything but the Z axis. I said Z. I always say Z. Wow. So anyway, that's some cool stuff. One last thing you can do, really easy, fun stuff, is if you select an edge, loop, um, we can press Control B and create a bevel like that, which is really helpful as well. And you can just scroll up, see how many segments do you want, scroll down, um, really nice and easy. And then we actually have more options if we come down here. We have the profile, so we could like change, I'll just show you, if you have it go in, have it come out to like a point. If we actually change the segments down, you can see that a bit more. When it's an even amount, it's easy to see that. Um, but yeah, so all that's doing is it's changing it from an inside or an outside angle. Um, but default is 0.5 if you just want a nice smooth uh, shape or something. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that. And we can change the type of bevel. Don't worry too much about these yet. The only like majorly different one is percent, and it's it'll it it's easy to demonstrate on something like. If I pull this way out, S, Shift, Z, pull this way out. So from here to here is 0 to 100%, or 0 to 100, and then here to here is 0 to 100. So if I do this bevel thing, and I have it on percent, by the way, I just press F9, and I can bring this panel up wherever I want. Um, but now, like, 50% will go, like, 50% along here and 50% along here. So you you know, this is actually really useful sometimes. Might not be what you're looking for right now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one way to do it too. So anyway, control B. And I can just F9 or come down here and change it to offset. That's typically fine. And then if you if you hit clamp overlap down here, um, it will actually stop where it hits an edge. So it won't do anything like this. Oh, no. So just hit clamp overlap and it'll just, it'll stop it, clamp it. Um, yeah, so have fun with those tools. Um, actually, let's leave off by making a battery. Simple, simple, simple. Like, let's see. So, I mean, there's a slight edge, like it slightly pokes out there. And then, you know, we've got that end tip right and it kind of indents before it comes back out at the middle so let's just make that battery um just gonna go into object mode and hit x and delete that um and we can just start with a cylinder if we want um and then we can change some of these settings so change the radius down Pfft, i don't know i'm not good at estimating how big this is what like Mm, two centimeters so radius would be one centimeter one centimeter tiny but I mean if we were it's good to keep it in world scale so yeah, let's do it. one centimeter and then we can change the depth down to I don't know mm, say that's like five centimeters maybe Five centimeters. How does that look? Eh, it's probably a little thinner. Oops. Or I mean, I don't know. Could be longer. Let's just make it longer. Not to scale. All right, that's good enough for me. So then, first thing is we got this. Let's just do the flat bit. It goes in a little bit and then down and then back out. So let's just do that real fast. 
There's a couple of ways we can go about doing that. We already have the face right here, so what are we going to do? Um, we could get rid of the face. And then press E and S, like we've been doing this whole time. And then go E, Z, pull it down a bit. E, S, pull it in a bit. E, Z, pull it up. And if we have... Actually, yeah, that's fine. And then... <laughs> If we wanted to get it exactly right here, we could go into our snapping options right here, click that on, and then have vertex selected. And we want it to snap to closest. If we just hit G and Z, put our mouse on one of these, it's going to snap to the exact point. So that's nice. Then we can just hit F to fill it. Um, yeah, so there's that. So that's one way of doing it. Um, but I'll show you the other way of doing it on the other side, I guess. So, huh, uh, <laughs> you know what? Let's just do this. So this will be the, let's, yeah. All right. I'll show you. This will be the, the top end, the plus side. So if I, this is the other method. If I hit I, I can inset it and it's going to kind of do an extrude thing while keeping the middle face so really useful stuff so there's an eye yeah, an inset thing there and then now i can just hit e to extrude the whole thing and just pull it up a little bit just like that and let's while we're here shade smooth auto smooth yeah that looks nice all right and then lastly down here so just uh, grab this and uh, we can inset it again. Now, what if I want it to go in right here? So, like, I could inset it again. And then I could do a face select and grab this ring right here with alt click. And then hit E to extrude. Oh, uh, what the? I don't know what I did there. Extrude region. Oops. So, if I hit E... I can just pull that up like that. That's one way I can do it. Or what I like to do to get an edge like this. So I'll pull this kind of in the middle, kind of where like the middle of the, the inset is. And then I can scale it later too if I, if I want it bigger or smaller. And then if I just, with that edge selected, the whole edge is selected. Yeah, the face is selected too, but we're focusing just on the edges right now. If I hit control B, I can actually just bevel that. I'll take it down to no segments or just one. I mean, scroll all the way down and then I can just like, go, Hmm, this is how thick I want it. Yeah. And then I can deselect that one, just shift clicking there, or I can just alt click this selection and then I can extrude it now or inset it. <laughs> no, let's just focus on extrude right now. But fun fact, you can actually extrude with inset. If you hit I and hold down control and move, it acts as an as an extrude. Um, and then if you let go of it, of control and keep moving, it'll do the inset. So this is actually a fun way as well to get some details. Hold down control to do the extrude thing and then let go and it insets it where it is. So it's actually really fun. I typically use I and then do it like that because I feel like I have more control faster. And let's say I did it like this and I'm like, oh, how do I make that little, how do I make this bit thinner now? Like I've already done it. I can't, I can, I could scale this down like that, scale this down like this, but who knows if it's exact. So what I would do is do control R and scroll up until my outer um, edges are where I want the thickness to be. So hmm, about there. And then just right click to cancel that movement. Then we can actually just delete. If I take this edge, alt click this one where the 90 degree angle is. If I hit X, it brings up this delete menu. I can do, uh, what is it? I, I have a hotkey for it. I think it's just dissolve edges. Yeah. So if you dissolve those edges, it just gets rid of it and then joins the faces to the next edge. So let's do that again. Just select this, alt select, and then X dissolve edges. And we can get rid of this one too. 
um, dissolve edges too. Yeah, so if you do have any loops like this and you just want to get rid of them, if you just hit delete right here and do edges, that's going to mess everything up because it's actually deleting all this edge information, which means all the faces are going with it. So what you want to do is instead of just deleting the edges, you want to dissolve the edges. So it'll dissolve those and keep all the data in there. That's definitely something I am glad I had in this video. Um, so yeah, we know how to add all those loops, but how to effectively get rid of them. So anyway, there's our battery. Um, we could, you know, see. And I like to I like to do this, so then I can see like how I'm splitting it up. You know, like uh, rule of rule of thirds, or typically with design, things look better if it's in thirds. So I can just do a loop cut here and then do two, so then it splits up into three segments. Or you know, I could do four like four segments like that, three edges to make four segments. Um, but really, I'm just kind of looking to get like that top bit. I can just deselect, shift, alt, click this one. And then actually, I think, I don't think I set this hotkey. I think it's a native hotkey that dissolve edges. If you have those edges selected and be sure that you are in edge mode, not vertex mode. If you're in edge mode and oh no, everything's done. That's why you got to be in edge mode. You spec you're specifying that yes, these these ones are the, the only edges I want to dissolve. If you hit Control X, it'll dissolve. So, Control X dissolves, and I do that a lot. So, you don't always have to bring up and press dissolve edges. So anyway, there you go. Um, yeah. So that's the end of that. And I guess if I wanted to change these colors, I can go down here to my materials tab, the little red ball, and I'm gonna make two materials. I'm gonna make like, um, I don't know if this is a Duracell battery, which I guess I have some actually right here. So getting the black, I want the black, I want the brown, and I want the silver. So all I would do is make a new material. This one is black. Um, might be, if you follow the tutorials, I think I'm pretty sure they're gonna go over um, materials and stuff um, but we can make back black we can make a new material and press we make a new slot and then we make a new material in that slot so press new and just right here we rename it to uh, brown and then right here we click again and we want the silver bit silver so black we want to go down to base color right here just click that Pull that down. Typically, nothing in re nothing in real life is completely black. Um, you could pull it all the way down if you want, but realistically, it's going to be a very dark gray. Um, something to keep in mind if you're trying to go for a more realistic look. So I've got my black. Then I've got my brown. So let's get a brown color. We just want to grab like an orangish, and then pull down the value, the blacks. And there we've got. A good brown and then silver what are we gonna do just make it gray I guess we could so just pull it down to silver to a gray color and now all we have to do is just select those faces so uh, here's a fun tip too um, if you just select that you can grow your selection incrementally if you hold down control and the number pad plus Button, except I have a different hotkey but that's what it is natively control and number pad plus I actually just have it on my mouse so I just I hold down control shift and I scroll so I like that but natively I won't get into changing all hotkeys yet until you're much more comfortable control number pad plus will grow it and you just want to grab all these ones like right there yeah and then we click our silver and we just hit sign now you're not going to see anything right now because we need to change the mode we're in, the viewport setting. So if we just go to shading right here. Oh, sorry, not shading. Uh, this is the this is the material preview it's called. So this is solid view and this is uh, material preview. So, and by default when you add a new material everything, like that first material, everything is assigned to that one material. 
which is actually it's fine in our case. So right here now I can I can select this edge, this edge, uh, faces, these faces, just alt shift clicking and then click brown and hit assign. And we have a brown. I'm wondering should this one kind of looks weird. Let's see if this one looks good if it's brown. Yeah, sure. And then down here, you can click that and then do the control plus thing again and make these silver. So yeah, there it is. I'm actually going to pull this down a little bit more. We have snapping on, so I'm just going to turn that off. GZ, just pull that down a little bit. Yeah, so there's our battery. Um, yeah, so that's it. You can make a lot of cool stuff. I hope you remember all those things. Recap, we did um, click E, S. That one you probably can't forget because I was doing it so much. Um, what else did we do? We did control R for loop cuts, scroll. You can, um, let's see, you can select these, alt, click. You can E and then shift Z to oops, not E, sorry, S, you can, yeah, sorry, so S, shift Z, will bring it in, and it, it won't shrink it in the Z axis, it'll scale it in everything but the Z axis, which is super useful, use that all the time, um, what else, uh, we did the inset thing, so you can just select face and press I and it'll inset it like that. And you can hold down control and it'll go in and out and then let go of control. Um, we did the bevel, so you can just select this, control B, then pull it out, grow it, shrink it. I do it here, change the profile amount if we want. That's cool. They don't make batteries like that. Um, and then alt click these, you can delete these by bringing up X and dissolve edges or just control X. Um, and then just making the materials. Yeah, so just have fun making some cylindrical stuff. Like see if you can make like a pen like this. This is my stylus pen or something like this or a Sharpie. I did a Sharpie and when I was first starting out, getting confident, learning, modeling, that was fun. So, yeah, just look for cool things. Even this bottle, I guess, too. Easy enough. Um, but yeah, just play around with it. The, the biggest component to learning something so complex like this is just you have to play around with it and just have fun with it. Make things that you see in your room. Um, like, you know, I've got some Lego up there. Whoop. And just making a Lego brick. See if you could do that. And that's, pro that's something I'll probably cover in another video but for now that's enough so enjoy just playing around with that encourage play and yeah just let me know if you have any questions and i will get back to you i'll put on the eyes again as we say goodbye put on my angry eyes oh my eye fell out oh my other eye fell out maybe this isn't so necessary well see you around